app. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen, you and I both keep our eye on young basketball players. You know, they'll eventually be in the league. And I also keep my eye on young people in sports media that have potential. And this next young lady is my favorite. Let's take a look at Rachel Louise. Now, even though this gym is temporary, it's going to be here for a few years. And right now, students say that, that is more than enough for them because this gym is a home run. Students say that this gym is a grand slam. But this gym is nothing but net. A hole in one. See, now, now, a lot of people want to clown her. But let me tell you why Rachel Louise Just is my favorite. She posted herself. And I also love this. The, 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 so the thing is, it's like the fact that she put that up herself makes me feel like she's got a sense of humor. She's not taking things too seriously. That is why I support Rachel Louise Just. So this is where I become elderly Jalen. Oh, what happened? What's wrong? It's really important in an era where... What are you doing? People look at their phones so very much that they can't walk down the street without bumping into somebody. Okay. The things that you see on social media aren't real. You don't. You think that was fake? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is I always appreciate someone who embraces their imperfections. There we go. There we that, go. That, that's really important to do in these days and times where people are just out of bounds. You know what else I love about follows. that is after two times she missed with the basketball, someone was like, just give her the volleyball. Maybe she can hit that. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, James Harden. 40 points last night. Mm. He had 40 points. 7 for 16 from 3. 7 for 8 from the free throw line. Now, I expected a drop in production from James Harden because Russell Westbrook is going to be his backcourt mate. Interesting, just from the preseason, he's been producing. Do you think that he can put up the numbers he did last year playing with Russell Westbrook? So I need to become a former basketball player for a second. I thought you were before, but that's fine. And what I'm about to say, I'm not happy about. Oh, no. I voted for James Harden to be MVP the last two years. I remember going down to Russell Westbrook when he's a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder mm -hmm. and hugging my brother because oh, people oh. were assassinating his character and talking about his style of play. Oh, And since then, he's averaged a triple-double for three straight years and won MVP. Mm -hmm. Something bothers me watching the Rockets play. What's that? And it's very earlier in the season. What's very that? early. I don't get too enthusiastic about the preseason, but there are certain trends that don't change. When we talk about dynamic duos, when you see LeBron James talking about Anthony Davis, he's being deferential. Mm -hmm. When you see Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they're talking about sacrificing. Mm. When I'm watching the Rockets play, Harden playing the exact same exact way. Exact same way. Like Russ ain't even there. And you know what else he's doing? Distorting the spacing when he's not initiating the offense. And here's what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. Russell's running a pick and roll on the right wing instead of James Harden being at the, the top of the three floor. Shooters, one of the best three-point shooters in the game. Or sliding to the left so that now if I get off the pick and roll, I could turn the corner and go down the middle or draw help and kick it to him. He's walking, drifting back towards half court. This is not new with James Harden. I've been talking about this, this not for new years. This is not James Harden. Okay, I pointed this out for years. This doesn't look like a great player partnership in the preseason. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to reserve judgment. In the preseason. There, there, there's, a little, there's a little hint of, of, of maybe this isn't the, the perfect, most compatible two players in the world, but we'll, we'll reserve I, I, judgment I'm just until the regular wax, season. Because you know how much I love Russell I know, Westbrook. I know. When you gave him a hug, did you go straight in for the hug, or did you like a pound and then a hug? Straight in for a hug. Straight in for the hug. He, did, he, he, did, he deserved it. Jalen, every once in a while, there's some sound. There's a news story where I'm like, I need to hear Jalen Rose react to this. And the latest was this from John Calipari. If anybody supports more rounds in the draft, those more rounds are to get kids to go to the G League. You do not care about college basketball or you're trying to ruin college basketball. This is about... What are we encouraging a ninth or 10th grader to do? If you're for more than the two draft rounds in the NBA, you all know that's to draft for the G League and encourage kids not to go to college. 
I'm not for that. Jalen, I've been in the media a long time. I know what he's doing. He's getting ahead of it. He sees which way the wind is blowing. He's like, oh, okay, the one and done rule is going to go away. That means the top flight high school kids go straight to the league. And, oh, wait a second, you're going to have a third round in the draft trying to get some more kids to go to the G League. What is left for top flight programs like the University of Kentucky? If those two things happen, what is left for college basketball? So I love Coach Cal, and I appreciate that sound so much that I'm going to guarantee that I'm going to reach out to him and have him be a guest on our show because of this reason. He's exactly right. Yes. When the player, when the top players are allowed to enter the NBA draft, by the way, they're only without really going to college. without going to college. That only represents really five people maximum a year. That it could be like eight, you know what I mean? But like, it's not like we're talking about that 20, ready. 10, 20 players. But being ready and being developed is two different things. Mm-hmm. So when that player now is able to go from high school to the NBA draft, that means you have a second tier of players that are going to go to college. That don't mean they're going to be ready after one year. No. Because usually the same player that's ready after 12th grade is the player that was, in theory, by the system, forced to go to college like a Zion Williamson. You've got a th- you get the third round of the NBA draft. You, you pick that guy that's not ready, and you just say, you know what? He'll be in Westchester for us for a year or two, and we'll develop him there instead of him being developed in college. Well, I got some advice for the players. Oh, you do? You don't want to be a third, fourth round NBA draft pick. Let me tell you a sentence that has never been uttered by a young player that loves basketball. I can't wait to be in the G League. It's been my dream. I've always dreamed of playing <laughs> in front of 45 people. That, 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 that sentence has never been said. Okay? So now all of a sudden, you create a third round of players that make less than $100,000 a year to play basketball. Their infrastructure is to play in the G League, to play overseas. And you know what happens to those guys? They don't make it to the NBA. It's hard to get back. It's hard to get back. Jalen, we had Jalen Ramsey in the news. Big day for Jalen's. Now we have Jalen Brown in the news. So the extensions are up in about a week. Mm -hmm. So there are some players that are looking, you know, you guys, you're going to take care of me. One of those players is Jalen Brown. Reportedly, as part of negotiations, Jalen Brown was offered $80 million in a four-year deal, $20 million a year. He turned that down. So, Jalen, what do you think about that Jalen sort of betting on himself and saying, if you're going to sign me to extension, you're going to sign me to big money because I'm going to be a star? I try to do a better job of acknowledging this because this was important to me as a young person. The people that I feel would be successful in life if they didn't have basketball. Ah, Jalen Brown falls into that category. Yeah, yeah. He's intelligent. CJ McCollum, too. He's indisciplined. I would bet on myself too. Here's why. A couple of years ago, he and Tatum were looking eye to eye as ba- breakout prospects. Mm-hmm. He took a step back to the point last year where he was a substitute. He was. This year, he's going to be a starter. And I got a case study for you as a contract that I'm walking into the office with. Harrison Barnes. He got paid more than that already. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be starting for the Celtics, I anticipate the Celtics definitely will be better this year than they were last year. Mm -hmm. You don't sneeze at $80 million ever. No. However, he now as a starter and as a two-way player is going to play his value to more money than that. His value is going up. That's great advice, Jalen, for that, Jalen. Coming in the studio right after this break, Miles Brown from Blackish, my favorite, my guy. One of the most articulate young men. They got franchises you will now. Ever Blackish, meet. grownish, mixedish. They getting paid. Right after this. Great I'll content. Go.